section, we're going to discuss personality disorders for behavioral science and psychiatry for doc and physician reviews. So what is personality? Personality is the way in which individuals view and adapt their environment, the way they think, the way they feel, the way they behave. And personality is the way you feel and behave, but when does it become a disorder? Well, it becomes a disorder when it becomes inflexible, pervasive, and maladaptive. So there are three main groups of personality disorders which we will discuss. And they're actually relatively common. And the more common personality disorders in women you'll see are histrionic, borderline, and dependent personality disorders. And in men you'll notice the antisocial and narcissistic disorders are more common. Now in this section, when I frequently teach this to students, they start getting very worried that they might have some kind of personality disorders. Now all of us might have traits of certain personality types, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we all have personality disorders, so that's a good thing to keep in mind. When you have a personality disorder, you do want to make sure that you differentiate any other kind of mental illness. For example, if someone has obsessive compulsive personality disorder, is it a personality disorder versus is it obsessive compulsive disorder? Or someone who has social phobia can also look a lot like avoidant personality disorder, so you want to make sure that you differentiate it from other psychiatric illnesses. You cannot diagnose a personality disorder before the age of 18, so the patient must be at least the age of 18 when they are diagnosed with a personality disorder. They will have a very hard time adapting to stress and relationships. And the questions on the exam are going to be pretty clear and obvious that they are, under, they are asking for a personality disorder, not a mood disorder. Personality disorders are very hard to treat. There is really no medication that will help you treat a personality disorder. The main way to treat a personality disorder will be psychotherapy. Sometimes a mood stabilizer for someone who has increased moods or uh, someone who's very aggressive might be helpful, but not necessarily. Frequently, these personality types will have comorbid psychiatric illnesses, such as depression and anxiety, and then you can use pharmacotherapy to help. Even when patients are compliant, they generally need long-term therapy. So there's three different clusters of personality disorders. So cluster A is the paranoid, the schizoid, and the schizotypal, and you can remember that as the weird. Cluster B is the wild, which is the histrionic, borderline, antisocial, and narcissistic personality disorders. And cluster C is the worried, or avoidant, dependent, and obsessive compulsive personality disorders. So I would actually know which personality goes with which cluster, not like the defense mechanisms. And the reason why is that because they could ask you which cluster that this personality disorder belongs in. And you can make this pretty easy on yourself. If you look at cluster A, okay, it's about the weird. Which are some of the weird personality disorders? Oh, that schizotypal has the word schizo, so that's weird psychotic. Schizoid has the word schizo and paranoid. Okay, so that's all kind of psychotic thinking. Okay, that's the weird. And then you have cluster C, the worried, which is someone who's anxious. So that would be the avoidant personality disorder, the dependent personality disorder, obsessive compulsive, which all have very anxious traits, and everything else, such as the borderline, histrionic, narcissistic, and a social fits in cluster B. So first we have the cluster A. So the first one we'll talk about is schizoid personality disorder. And schizoid personality disorder is very characteristic. These people like to be alone. They don't want to have any friends. They don't want to have any family around. They just like being alone, doing their own thing. They're not trying to make friends. They don't want you to come over and say hi to them. They don't really care. They have a difficult time expressing emotion, and they're emotionally detached, and frequently have first-degree relatives with schizophrenia. You want to rule out social phobia and avoidant personality disorder. How you can tell the difference between these two is that schizoid personality disorder does not want to make friendships, whereas the other two will want to be close to other people. Paranoid personality disorder, this person has a basic pervasive sense that people are out 
to get them, that they're kind of suspicious, they don't believe everyone, but it's not a full-blown delusion. And sometimes they might have some delusional disorder like the paranoid subtype, subtype but it's just kind of an underlying, not sure if they can trust people. And an example of this is that I had a colleague that in clinic, we were all given the same amount of patients every single time. They had a very good system of how to add patients into our practices. And this colleague was sure that they were always adding extra patients. Or when we went to the console service, she was always sure that they were giving her extra patients to see. So she just kind of had this general sense of mistrust. Again, you want to rule out any psychotic or delusional disorders. These are typical personality disorders will be very easy to pick out as well. These people are very silly and they have different patterns of beliefs, odd behaviors, they're dressed up with long stringy beads, they have very elaborate outfits, sometimes considered as schizophrenia light. Um, frequently they have first degree relatives of schizophrenics and you want to rule out schizophrenia, a mood disorder with psychotic features. Patients may be paranoid due to their unique perceptions and beliefs. You might want to think of someone who reads palms, who um, has those rooms with the beads, you have to move those when you open up, or someone who plays a lot of video games, uh, Dungeons and Dragons, things like that. You might want to think of that when you think of schizotypal personality. Next, we'll move to the cluster B personality traits. The first one is the narcissistic personality disorder. And this is most commonly seen in men, and what you'll see in a narcissistic person is that they will think that they are the best. Nobody else could be better than them. They're arrogant, they're entitled, they think they've done everything right and the other person hasn't. They generally have a very low self-esteem, but they use this personality disorder to cover it up and to make it not look that way. They don't really care about other people, and you definitely want to rule out uh, bipolar disorder in a manic phase with these patients because they tend to be very grandiose. Next you'll have histrionic personality disorder. And the characteristic picture of a person with histrionic disorder is a female who comes in and she has a low cut shirt on and a mini skirt and high heels. She's very seductive and she really wants to get to know you better and really needs a lot of attention. People will notice her when she comes into the room. She's very loud. Her clothes are very bright. She just wants everybody to know that she's there. Again, these people have a very low self-esteem, very exaggerated responses to minor events, and a lot of them have a comorbid, comorbid somatization disorder. You want to rule out a grandiose affect of someone with a bipolar disorder with this as well. Borderline personality disorder, more common in females, very difficult time with impulse control, unstable interpersonal relationships and self-image. These are the ones that you see that frequently come into the emergency room because they cut on themselves and self-mutilating behavior makes them feel better. It decreases the pain. They frequently feel empty inside and they feel abandoned. Uh, there is an increased suicide rate with these patients as well. They have a very unstable self-image and frequently have antisocial personality disorder in their families as well as alcohol. And you want to make sure you rule out any mood disorders or substance abuse in those patients. Remember that with borderline personality, splitting is a common defense mechanism. Antisocial personality disorder, these are the guys that have no remorse. So if you remember the conduct disorder kids that didn't care, they stole, they lied, they cheat, very similar, that's what antisocial personality people do. They uh, high incidence of comorbidity with alcohol and drugs, frequently will have history of being in jail or prison, really don't care about any other person except for themselves. You want to again rule out a bipolar disorder and evaluate for substance abuse. The only treatment for an antisocial personality disorder is basically put them into jail or eventually they'll die, but it's very, very, very difficult to treat. Your next cluster is your cluster C, and here you have the avoided personality disorder. And in the avoided personality disorder, these people are very, very sensitive. They want to be liked and they want to be close to other people, but they have intense feelings of inadequacy which cause them to avoid interaction with other people. 
they fear rejection, they're very sensitive to criticism. And how you will differentiate this from social phobia is that they're not fearful of the embarrassment or humiliation, they're just feeling inadequate. So you want to make sure you differentiate the two. Dependent personality disorder, a characteristic on the vignette for your USMLE will be someone who is living with an abusive spouse and requires them to make all of their decisions, doesn't want to go anywhere alone, must be with them at all times, and are very needy. You want to evaluate for another personality disorder like borderline personality disorder, but these guys won't be cutting on themselves or any parasuicidal behaviors. And then we have obsessive compulsive personality disorder. These guys don't have the obsessions and compulsions of someone with obsessive compulsive disorder, but what's different is that they're, they are rigid and they like to have things done a certain way. They have to pack things a certain way, but they're not, they don't have the exact obsessions and compulsions. They have to be in control of everything. Most of us as doctors will have some obsessive compulsive personality traits, which in some ways is kind of protective because we have to make sure that Things are done a certain way, we're checking on things because we don't want the bad things to happen to our patients. And this concludes the section on personality disorders for behavioral science and psychiatry for Falcon Physician Reviews. And this concludes the section on personality disorders for behavioral science and psychiatry for Falcon Physician Reviews.